So welcome back to part three, where we're going to take this denim texture from Substance Painter across into Blender with our mesh from Core 3D and set this up ready to render for a final the end of this project. Um, the way we're going to do this is very simply file export textures. Um, I'm using a PBR metallic roughness workflow here. So this is my output template. If you click on output templates, scroll down to PBR metallic roughness, you'll see what maps you're going to get. So I'm going to get a base color with the opacity in the alpha channel. So this pink indicates my opacity and that information is being put in the alpha. Um, that will become clear inside Blender. Roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. And the normal map is actually the direct X one. Um, I want the OpenGL one. So it's good that I check this. So I can just drag this OpenGL into here click RGB channels and now I'm taking my OpenGL normal map and not my DirectX normal. Um, depending on the software you're using, you need to check which normal map you're working with. Blender uses an OpenGL normal map, so that's fine. Back to settings, I'm going to scroll to the folder where I want to export this to, which is somewhere. So let's go, let me just navigate to the folder. Okay, so I'm just going to make a new folder in this directory and call it substance exports. And just save everything in here. So actually, no, it didn't. Substance exports, yeah. So now my textures are being exported into this folder and my resolution is based on the texture size of this project. So this is now set to 2K. I want this to be 4K for use in Blender. So I'm going to take the 4K one and click export. And then it'll just run through and export one image texture for each UV tile for each channel that we want to work with. So when this is done, we can then jump back into Blender. So let's click save settings, let's save our project, and then let's open up Blender. And we need to import our mesh from Clo3D, which we exported in the first part of this series. So let's bring, right, Blender. I'm gonna go file, import, OBJ, I'm going to go to my where I've got this saved. And I'm just going to import the thick export that I had before. So I'll take the thick one and I know I can bring the thin one as well. I can import those. So now I've imported both of them. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the thin one and just work on the thick one for now. Um, delete this cube and let's look at how we can set up these textures. So I'm just going to make a split in this area. So I'm going to right click here, vertical split and split my work area so I can look at my texture on this side and my shader on this side. So let's go to shader editor. And quickly with this mesh selected, if I look under my materials, I've got three material slots again. So to understand what the, what they, these are doing, um, I'm going to go to this uh, material preview. This isn't rendering, it's just previewing the material. So um, let's set this one to pink. So we know this is our base denim. This is our trim fabric. And this is our buttons. So for now, I just want to work in this material slot. I'm going to click the shader. And if you've got um, node wrangler activated, so edit preferences, add-ons, go to node, and I've got node wrangler checked. Click this node, this BSDF input, and do control, shift, and T on the keyboard. Navigate to the folder where you export the textures to. So this is my substance export. Press A to select everything and click principal texture setup. And you'll see this doesn't work perfectly immediately. These are all set to single image. So if I just jump up here and click UDIM for each one of these, it's quicker if I'm not in uh, material preview mode. 
change everybody to UDIM instead of single image. Because I am using multiple UDIMs in this workflow. And then let's preview this again. So now my texture is set up pretty accurately. Um, the button material, again, I could input the texture set over here as well, or I could just simply set up a kind of gray metallic shiny button. So these look metallic now. And then for the fabric down here, I can control this by itself. Or if I just delete this material slot, it will join with the one above it. And now this is being controlled by um, the same image textures as the dress. So I've just got one material slot. Um, the opacity of this, because I put a bit of opacity in this here, is in the alpha channel of this base textures. So if I take the alpha output and put it in the alpha input, um, we can view the, the opacity of this. It's not visible in this preview mode. I'm going to have to go into render view. So let's go over here, choose the camera icon, go to cycles, set it to GPU, and then go into render preview. And there might be a bit of opacity, not visible. Um, you'll see immediately this looks crazy on the uh, normal map and displacement. So we can quickly try to fix this. I'm just going to add some lights though. So in the 3D viewport, press Shift and A to add, go to light and choose area. Press G to grab it. Press Z to lock this to the Z and up down axis and just drag this up. And now we've got kind of a panel of light above. Increase the intensity of this in the light settings on the side and just set this to maybe 50. And you'll see immediately what I mean by this. So if I zoom in, there's a lot of information in this displacement map that's being pushed too far, which is why this mesh, this texture looks the way it does. Um, I can simply just turn this off by setting the scale to zero. And now we're just using our normal map. Again, if I set the normal map strength to zero, um, we're going to lose all of that surface information. So uh, maybe set this to 0 0.5 if it's too intense. Um, but now you can control the, you know, the wrinkling and the edge thickness of this mesh. If we want to make any changes to this, we can do this in our shader editor right here. So for example, the alpha channel, if I want to view this alpha channel for this skirt, press control sh shift and left click on the channel that you want to look at. So if I want to look at this color one, control shift, left click. I'm now just looking at this color map. If I do control shift, left click on the alpha, I will see the opacity. And very slightly noticeable, this is white and this is very light gray. I want this to be grayer. So it's more transparent. So let's just add a shift and then search for ramp and drop this color ramp in my alpha connection. If I then want to view the output of this ramp, I do control shift and left click and click the color icon. And now I'm viewing the output of this. And if I drag my black slider down, the, uh, the fabric on the bottom here is becoming darker. So I've got more translucency happen transparency happening. And then to view the shader again, control shift and left click on BSDF. And we are now viewing our material. So if I look closer into this, I can see through the front of this fabric. And then I can see the back of this as well. So I can, you know, control that opacity without having to go back to Substance Painter. Um, we could do the same on the roughness, for example, if we want this to look any rougher. If we want to change the base color, we could do Shift and A, search for a hue, saturation value. And just, you know, maybe bring the saturation down a little. And push the value up a bit to make it a bit brighter. And then you can really adjust this color exactly as you want it inside Blender without having to backtrack into Substance Painter. Um, just a note on that though, if you do need to backtrack into Substance, um, you you make changes to this. Let's say our top coat we changed to red and now we want this, this pink denim. Again, we can change the color of this inside um, Blender directly. But if you do export again, export your textures, export them in the exact same directory so that when 
Blender reloads, it will reload the textures that you overwrite and you don't need to set all these nodes up again. So it will just reload the textures from the directory. So that's often a lot easier. Um, to get a nice render out of this, if we look at this in render view, we probably need some more lights. So Blender just crashed on me, something happened, either Blender or Substance, and I did not save this file. So tip, file, recover, autosave. This file was my last one from when, like a couple minutes ago, recover, autosave, and my file is back here. So if you ever crash out of Blender, just check your autosave folder, and it should bring you back to kind of the last um, moment that you were in. Okay. So like I said, if we want to make some renders of this, we're probably going to need some additional lights in the scene. And I think I want to put like a background into this as well. So let's look at this in uh, shaded mode. I'm going to press shift and A and look for a cube. I'm going to drag this up and scale this up just to give myself like the illusion of a room. Let's go to edit mode. Press three on the keyboard to be in face select and then just select these three faces and delete them. So now my mesh is kind of standing in the corner. Um, if I go here to face orientation, this is the back of the normal map, not the front. It's red, blue is front, red is back. So if you look inside, this is the thick mesh. If you look inside the thin mesh, the back is red, the front is blue. To fix this, Select all your faces, go to Mesh, Normals, and Flip. And now they're set the correct way around. Back into Object View, and I can just turn off the face orientation in the overlays, and then we can look at adding some additional lights into this. So let's look at this. This currently doesn't have a material applied to it, so if I click the cube, add a new material, I could just up the metallic reduce the roughness, for example, to make this shiny, or bring the roughness up to make this quite matte. And I can add a color to this as well if I want. But I just want some kind of white space around to capture the light. So let's add some more lights so in the 3D viewport on this side. I'm just going to press Shift and A light and do a point light. And again, this adds it in the bottom here. So I'm just going to Press G on the keyboard to drag this up and just drag this behind our um, character. I'll increase the intensity to about 150 and the radius I can increase as well to just add some brightness into this, this studio space that we're creating. Um, this is a really simple light setup. I'm just going to raise this area light a bit. Scale it up. Increase the intensity to again to about 150, maybe 75, actually too much. Yeah. The one last light we could add is a spotlight. And to do that, I'm going to use an empty as well. So press shift and A, add an empty sphere. Press S to scale this down quite small, like, you know, handball size, let's say. Just so it's not too big. And then put this on a point where we kind of want to shine the light on our avatar. Let's say like this side of the body to kind of cast some light across the, the way there. Press shift and A again, look for light, add a spotlight. The spotlight is automatically facing down. So if I grab this, it's still pointing down. I can use R to rotate this around, but it's, it's annoying. The best way to do this is go to our object constraint, which is this blue kind of gear looking thing under object constraints, choose track two, under target, choose empty. And now this will point wherever I go, always at that empty. So you see this line in the middle is always pointing at this empty spot right here. Let's reduce the spot size of this a little, and then we can increase the power of this light as well, maybe to about 50, 100 even and then increase the radius of this light a little bit. And you'll see if we start to move this around, we can just cast some extra light on this wherever we might want to. Uh, let's look at it from the front. Shine the light kind of down and across. 
like this. Right. Um, the next thing we would want to add is a camera. And as I start to work in this area on the side, all these overlays are, are visible. I can see everything, the ground, the, the lights, all these lines are visible. If I want this gone, just turn off overlays up here. This show overlays. And now I'm just viewing a nice rendered scene. Um, let's add a camera. Oh, we've got a camera here. Let's set depth of field and let's turn this on under the camera settings and let's look through this camera. So I'm going to click this toggle camera view here and we're looking at this from really far away. Toggle back and if I'm kind of lined up, I like this shot. Press control, alt and zero on the keyboard and your camera is going to jump to that spot. Um, depth of field is turned on so I'm getting this blur effect and I want the focus point of this depth of field to be the same empty as my light so let's choose empty and now that empty right there is the focus point so if you imagine a plane through this area here that's where the camera is focusing in on and then we will get depth of field in the front and the back of this my camera is landscape I want a square input so go to the one that looks like a printer set this to 1024 by 1024 which is 1k and then if I press N on the keyboard and click view, I check camera to view, I can, you know, frame this up. So let's zoom out. But, you know, now my camera view is away. I want to zoom in on this, but I don't want to zoom the camera movement. Again, press N on the keyboard to make this menu come out. Turn off camera to view and then zoom in again. And this will zoom our frame space back. In. So if I want to move the camera again, jump back to camera to view move this around a little bit wherever we are and there's a really simple kind of like light and environment setup to get kind of a nice product shot I think this is working if you toggle around again you'll jump out of uh, the camera view so again click the camera and this is my current render um, if I want more angles on this just choose the camera and press shift and D to duplicate it to view this camera now camera one instead of camera I can just click this icon right here so this is now my active camera if I go camera to view I could zoom around you know pan this around a little bit zoom in make a nice detail shot let's say you know like this and then I can look by clicking these camera icons here back through any of my other cameras so this is all set up ready to go the last thing I want to check is my output is my render settings so I'm going to turn off denoising I don't need it really in this case, I don't think. I'm going to set my samples to 2048, maybe 1024. Let's do 1K samples and then leave this noise threshold as it is. And then we're just going to go to render, render image, and let's see how this looks. I just want to check. Yeah. The graphics card is, is selected. And this is my render. We can see we've got some transparency happening with this fabric on the bottom. The look of this is quite nice. This is 1K, so I can't really zoom in too much. Um, but this is looking good. So, yeah, if you guys um, have any questions on this workflow or this process, um, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm going to make an additional part of this to show you how to add, like, uh, holes and washed and worn out details into the denim as well in Substance Painter and how to bring that back into blender so um stick around for the next part where we look at these uh more distressed effects um but this is the whole process from uh claw to substance to blender to get a nice render in the end